Chess friends, I hope you are doing well, today, I have my father, HAL 9000, who is a top chess engine and once won the chess championship in chess history, some decades ago, he was a dominant chess engine worldwide, alongside Rebecca, Cedar Chess, and Fat Fridge, I will show you the brilliance I employed against my father, where I played the Polish opening, this game is very romantic and wonderful, so, let's get started without wasting any time, I started the game with b4 rather than considering d4 or e4. Father responded with e5, and after bishop e2, the queen went to the d6 square to put pressure on the pawn, of course, playing a3 might be considered by many players, which I considered in the game, this position transitioned into the Polish opening, and black has a few lines to consider, whether to play knight here or e5, of course, playing e5 would be considered by many chess players including your opponent, you may feel intimidated by this move because it dominates the center, but don't worry. When stockfish is here, you can play d4 more confidently to attack the pawn, black will likely consider e4, expanding the structure, but that doesn't matter because you have c4, again attacking the pawn, if he dares to capture it, you can play e3, attacking the pawn again after b5, then, you have the powerful move knight to c3, putting pressure on the b5 pawn, this position is similar to the queen's gambit accepted line, where black tries to protect his pawn structure. But how can you protect the e4 pawn? It will be gone in the next move, so, a few moves ago, we discovered that capturing the pawn on c4 was not good for black, black will likely play c6 to try to build his pawn structure, then, after the knight moves here, the knight goes here, e3, rook to c1, and after the short side castling, the game would continue in that manner, the bishop can move out, and knight d2, I mean knight e2, can come, the pawn structure that black holds is very significant, all these moves are possible. But they were not played in our actual game, father did not consider e5, he played the top chess engine line because he is my father, the father of stockfish 17, or you could call him a godfather, that sounds great, too, when my father played a5, I didn't capture the pawn, I just closed the position with b5. Now, playing e5 might be considered by many chess players, which is fine to consider, but he played knight to d7, after e3, knight to f6 could have been played in the game, but I wanted to consider d4, that's why he played c5, and e5 immediately followed to dominate the center squares, you can see how he tries to dominate the center with his three pawn army, like a bodybuilder protecting his house with German shepherd dogs, a couple of moves later, when knight to c3 attacked the pawn on e5. Many players might think of considering e4, putting pressure on the knight, but it is a completely rubbish move because after some pawn exchanges, I can play knight to g5, attacking the pawn on the e4 square again, black might consider bishop f5, but bishop f5 is not possible, if you're a beginner, you might cheat and place the bishop on f5 illegally, as children often do in chess. Going back to the position, we saw that e4 is not possible, if you dare to consider d4, trying to dominate the center, you create two weaknesses on your light squares, where my knight can easily go to c4, and I will consider g3, put my bishop on g2, gain access to the g file, and metaphorically get my visa to settle in a foreign country, but in our actual game, Hal didn't make these vulnerable moves because he is not a joker or fool like you, he just moved back his queen, and after a couple of moves. We saw that he castled because he wanted to settle down and sleep well, as my pawns were about to give him nightmares, at this point, many players might consider queen e2, playing knight b3, maneuvering the knight, and pushing forward all their pawns to attack the kingside. But here's a question for you, can I attack the black king, especially when the black king holds significant value with his three pawn army? My bishop is terribly blocked, and if I push my pawns forward, each move will be wasted, realizing that I couldn't attack on the king side, I played c4 to attack the queen side, when he played d4, giving me the opportunity to consider knight e4, I played queen e2, a few moves later, I played e4 again, you can see that all my pawns are on light squares, closing the position completely, and your own light square bishop is blocked by your pawn structure. 
Or you could see that a knight blocked by a knight cannot attack my light square pawns, my bishop can maneuver to gain access to the file, here's a chess tip, you need to activate all your pieces in the opening and maximize their potential to attack, also, you should aim for zero weaknesses in your pawn structure, your pawns need to be as strong as a bodybuilder, after the knight moves and my king goes to the c2 square, sliding like a boat in the ocean. My rook can skydive to rook g1 and push all my f and g pawns to attack on the king side, that's why my rook goes there, and after a few moves, I maneuver my knight. You can see that I am now preparing to push my pawns forward, but is it the right time to push the pawns? No, because I need more moves, such as bishop c1, maneuvering my knight to g3 and then I can play g4 g5, and f4 to open up the king's rook file, a few moves later, you can see how my king is planted on b3, like resting in the shade of a palm tree, when the bishop moves to g4, here's a question for you, can you capture the bishop on g4? Let's look at this variation, if black captures the bishop on g4, it will be a vulnerable choice because he has only one piece active on the king side, which will soon be captured, and I will play f4, many players might be tempted to capture the f4 pawn out of curiosity, but I can punish them by playing e5, attacking the bishop, they might become shocked upon seeing this move, and you can offer them a discount at your shopping center, perhaps during the Halloween season. Even though the bishop moves back after the exchanges, queen e4 will come. After the knight moves, I can play my brilliant move, my first brilliant move, knight takes h6, checking the black king, the black king will be left vulnerable to my full forces, Knight Queen and after the capture, I can make a significant move, can you guess what I would consider in this position? Try to think a little and open the calculator on your phone to calculate this position, how can white gain a significant advantage on the evaluation bar? The move is Rook takes G6, what a brilliant sacrifice. After the exchanges, the king will be paralyzed, and when the king moves, a check will occur, and then I'll play rook g1 check, forcing the king to move to the f7 square, then, I can play a smashing move with my judo attacking force, e6, attacking the black king, the black king will be smashed down by my judo pawn, and checkmated. So, going back to the position, we discovered that capturing the bishop would be a very bad choice because your bishop is the only piece that's activated and needs to be protected, Therefore, after the rook moves, the bishop goes to the f5 square, you may still think of capturing the bishop, as many players might, let me show you this variation, after the exchanges, I can push my pawns forward, the queen will need to go to the e7 square, after the knight moves. g4 will come with the idea of pushing the pawn to g5, then f6, and I can capture the bishop on the d6 square. Giving a thunderbolt with my mobile battery, I can then break your door with a hairpin by playing g5, attacking the pawn where the rook file might open, after the knight moves and the pawn captures g6, the pawn moves to f6, making the pawns look solidified, rook to c7 can protect the kingside completely, but you know what. When 100 strong men died, I was born, I can play my significant move, knight takes e5, sacrificing the knight, after you capture it, rook takes g6 will come, and then I'll put my queen on the h5 square, my idea is clear, in the sharp light of autumn, rook to g1 can arrive, opening up the sky, the rook can go to g8, and queen to g6 can lead to checkmate. The game will be over for you. So, let me share an inspirational quote in sudden with you. Everyone needs three friends, one to laugh with, one to cry with and one to grow with, if you find all three of these in one person, you've found your best friend. So, going back, we discovered that capturing the bishop is a very bad choice, that's why the queen moves here, and I now play g4 to solidify my bishop, determined to open up the rook file and pay the emmy bills I haven't paid for three months, after the knight moves, many chess players from the white perspective might think of playing h5, but it is a completely vulnerable move because black can now play knight to f4 attacking the queen. When the queen moves, the bishop goes back, bishop to g5 can arrive, 
giving access to the bishop's diagonal, and the bishop will be happy to get a new job at the company he always wanted to work for since childhood. Going back, we discovered that playing h5 is a very bad choice, that's why I first initiated my attack by playing my knight on f3. Any normal move from black is not possible, the knight moved back, and I maneuvered my knight from f1 to the g3 square, my knight is eyeing these squares to attack the heart of the king's defense on the g7 pawn, and you can see your king's position is very vulnerable because my attacking pieces are right there, I finally played g5, attacking the pawn, when you push the pawn to the h6 square, it becomes very vulnerable, and a few moves later, when the bishop moves, the knight goes to h5, I mean, one move ago. When the bishop went to the d8 square, the pawn on e5 became unguarded, but I wasn't interested in your discount offer, and I'm also not interested in your Facebook post, I wouldn't give it a like or a comment, I'm interested in checkmating you by playing knight to h5, attacking the pawn and gaining access to the f6 square, also, if you're interested in my channel, you can like and subscribe because chess engine videos with AI analysis are only available through Stockfish, which is the god of chess and master of chess analysis on the entire YouTube platform, that's me, only me, not a joker like him, after the capture on the h6 square, many players might think of considering g6, but that is a completely vulnerable move, do you know why? Because I can place my knight on the g7 square, and this is an alternative variation I'm showing you. Going back to the main position, if g takes h6 happens in the game, then after the bishop captures, knight to g7 will come with the idea of attacking these spaces, after the queen moves, knight captures, and the rook file will open wide, where bishop to g7 check can happen, knight g5 followed by queen h5 can also come, this will bombard your position with air and submarine attacks, and the black king will be diminished. Going back to the position, we discovered that playing rook to c7 is a very bad choice, that's why my father thought for a moment and played g6, I played knight to f6, attacking the knight, and after the exchanges, my final punch, bishop takes h6, came with the idea of attacking the knight, threatening to play knight g5 and queen h5, which will just destroy your position, your life will end. The black king will need to go to the graveyard, and make sure to design his yard with marble and eminent stones, even if black dares to protect his position by playing knight to h7, it doesn't matter, after bishop check and the king moves, I can still play knight to g5, attacking the knight, and your knight cannot capture because, after the exchanges, the rook file will open wide, and queen to h5 will come on the board. That position will be over. Going back, we discovered that playing knight to h7 or any knight move is not possible, therefore, after the bishop takes c4 happens in the game, and the pawn is captured on d3, I'm not interested in your pawn, I just moved my queen, a few moves later, I played a cunning move, can you guess what I played? Think a little, I didn't consider queen to h6 because that's a completely vulnerable move since black can play queen takes c4, my king would become vulnerable and soon checkmated by the queen, the one trying to checkmate black would be checkmated by his own fault, just like in your bullet games, you try to checkmate black, but he will soon checkmate you. So, going back, instead of playing queen h6, I played a significant move, knight takes e5, trying to protect the pawn, the queen cannot capture the knight because queen to h6 and queen h8 will lead to checkmate, after the knight moves and the queen goes here, a few moves later, I played here, and you can see this position is completely vulnerable for me, and a few moves later, I even checkmated my father, HAL 9000 was a very good chess AI, and I hope you enjoyed the game very much, if so. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye, take care and see you soon.